Hey everyone, uh, Roman here from the Profits Indicator Suite. Uh, we're rolling out a new update. Um, this will be the Profits 2.0 update. Um, they're all rolling out to the new uh, version 2.0. Um, yeah, pretty cool, pretty exciting. They've come a long way um, since their birth at the start of the year in 2021. Um, we're really proud of them. Uh, had a lot of great feedback. Uh, really cool. So we'll delve into the first guide. Uh, today's this video will be about the guide uh, for Profit 2.0. All right, we'll go into the settings, and this is where you see the magic. Uh, and we'll just go through this one by one for the guide. So we've got some buy and sell uh, indicators on here that they are signals in, in essence. Um, but I don't think you should ever take them just blindly. Um, you can backtest these yourself. It's actually a profitable trading strategy to do it on the like the four hour um, to take them blindly, but you really want to improve that risk to reward when you take these signals. Um, so cross-referencing those with some some order blocks or divergence or a pin bar or something. Um, that's when you can really start to get that uh, risk to reward or that um, win to loss ratio in your favor as well, right? So we'll throw them on the chart. And you've got different um, variations of them. So there's small ones, big ones, uh, medium ones, all them variations of all. By default, they're set to all, and you'll see there's different um, different size ones on the chart. So when you see a larger one, it usually means that um, that it's oversold or overbrought to the extreme, right? See how this is actually a larger icon than say this little one here. When prices choppy to the sideways, you will get a lot of mix in between them, and that's why we made them small. They're less relevant, okay? It's the it's the really big ones that have the nice high strike rate, uh, and they can see you off some nice trades. We zoom out a wee bit, we can see that the the, the la much larger ones actually get you in the swing lows, right, and in the swing highs. So I highly recommend um, definitely checking out the larger ones, and the larger they are, the stronger they are usually. Um, and then just, if you can cross-reference, say, a sell signal uh, like this one here, um, with maybe an SFP or some bearish divergence or something, and then wait for that to come in, so here's the SFP here, right, then you take that short and then you ride that down and that can be maybe a hedge for your long um, to then uh, try and make a little bit of capital uh, throughout this process while your long goes slightly um, back towards your entry wherever that may have been um, if you'd long say the, um, the the small signal down here but as usually uh, doesn't lock in the small signal or the, the big signal or the medium one they don't actually lock in until that candle is closed so this one here for instance it looks good in the moment but it didn't actually lock in as a um, signal until here, once that candle closed up there, right? It will flash there during the formation of this candle. While it looks good, it will sit there flashing on and off based on the data that it's um, grabbing that information from. But it isn't locked in as a confirmed buy signal until it's uh, closed, right? Because this could come up, be nice and green, and then get dumped on, come straight back down, and then the buy signal's gone. There's a huge wick left behind, and you brought up here thinking it was a buy signal. That's not how they work. They are after the candle closed. So when you see the icon, it's the next candle that is uh, the entry usually. Um, but I'd highly recommend mixing it in with some kind of like SFP, like over here, right? Where you can actually then take that short or short into the, um, the, the, the rally back up. To then try and ride that down or hedge or however you wanted to play that right so the other buy and sell signals um, they work on all time frames usually the daily is great for it uh, or the four hour as you can see here on the daily you get some nice rallies right of these bigger signals so that that in itself look they are a profitable trading strategy and you can trade those bigger ones or the medium ones um, nakedly and you'll actually end up as a profitable trader um, the data says it um, you don't even need to overthink that like I've got the backtested data for that. If you can combine that with other stuff though, like I said at the start, that risk to reward ratio is much greater in your favor and so is that win-loss ratio, right? Because they are separate things. Next is just a basic Bollinger Band. We've gone and thrown that on the chart. So that's now part of the um, indicator suite. Just saves you having to have an extra indicator on there. Um, Bollinger Bands are definitely something that I always randomly look at. I don't put too much weight on it. But as we can see, when price is bouncing around it, it actually respects it pretty fucking well. So just keep an eye on that. Um, and you can use always use that for another strategy as well. Like say if you've got bearish divergence here. There's an SFP here. We're at the top of the um, Bollinger Band. Then turn that into a trading strategy. If we've got a sell signal here as well. Um, and whatever. Then you can try and add those points up to try and get that uh, confluence. 
but ultimately there's just a naked Bollinger Band now added to the um, indicator as well. We've got Ichimoku on here. Um, you guys are all aware of that. If you don't know how to use Ichimoku, we've got that uh, channel within the Discord that has my um, five episode training tutorial on how to use Ichimoku in itself, by itself. Um, it's actually looking really good. We're now above the ditch. Cool. So we'll move on from Ichimoku. Next is the pin bars. This is a great tool. Uh, what it does is it actually highlights on the chart the pin bars for you. So we're on the daily here, and it's highlighting the um, bullish ones and the bearish ones based on the color, right? So green for bullish, red for bearish. Just keep in mind when you're at the top of a rising wedge like this, that a bullish pin bar can only do so much, right? So it also um, means you've got to apply a little bit of logic to it. Uh, if you're at the top of a huge trend like this, right, you've been pumping for days, and then you get this huge sell-off. That's not necessarily a bullish pin bar in the sense, but because the wick was to the lower side, right, and the counter body was above the wick, then that's why it's painted green, just like this one here. And that's why the wick on the top over here is making it red. So that's a bearish pin bar in this sense. So don't get too carried away of like, oh my god, a pin bar, I'm going to long it or get in. Um, Cross-referencing pin bars with uh, divergence as well as an order block or a um, P candy or P candle. Um, much, much more successful. You don't want to be taking random pin bars in the middle of a trading range, right? So here's the range. A random pin bar is not so effective, right? You really want to see them at the bottom of a range, like down here. Um, if we, This is a pretty good example here, actually. That was the low of our range through here. Right, and we can see a pin bar come in down here. It hasn't actually marked that one, I'm not sure why. Um, but we get that nice reaction there, because that's a small body, large wick. Right, so that's a pin bar there. Uh, moving on from that. We've got SFPs, that's coming soon. That's our next project we're working on. Um, or Hazel, sorry, we'll be working on. He's the genius behind this. Um, we want to get these order blocks out. We're really, really keen on that being the 2.0 focus. Um, the, the mastered order blocks that we've been harassing in TradingView for a while now um, to get the, the new update out so we can have our permanent order blocks on the chart. So once that's done, the next step will be moving towards SFPs. So we'll be able to put the SFPs with alerts, right, as well as a signal to take the trade. So if we've got a, um, a key order block, say for instance through here, there's an order block and price comes up and does this, right, and then goes like that, and then ends up closing under here, and it, the indicator knows it SFP'd. We can make it take the trade for us automatically, uh, go short or hedge or however, and then take this down and ride the, um, the ride the wave down, right? So we can all automate that through that. That'll be next in the uh, next update or patch. Um, so just keep it on that, so the SFP one there. The 30 VWMA is just a volume weighted moving average that I've watched over my trading career. I find it's really good for um, bias or directional bias. Uh, when you're trading above it, it usually means you're pretty strong. Um, we'll load here for a second. So it's it's a moving average that's weighted by volume. So when the volume picks up, it picks up as well quite a lot more. So as we can see through here, it started pumping. Right, the volume would have picked up a lot throughout this period here, where a normal moving moving average may have taken a while like this to catch up. Right. So it's, it's, it's really good for momentum, really good for knowing the um, the strength of the trend. So when we're above it like this, or when we reclaim it like this, we usually see a nice rally, right? When we reclaim it, nice rally. So just keep an eye on that. Um, definitely worth using in your back testing to see if that can complement any previous trading strategies uh, you've got. Um, it's something that I definitely take into account with uh, a lot of my stuff. So on a, say maybe on a daily time frame, we're going into the middle of a bull run and we start to lose it or start to get close to it like this or buy it's either a long entry if the pin bar's here or the morning star's there right or the pin bar here it's a nice long entry especially if you're doing some kind of like ascending um, pattern through here we lost it instantly so that was definitely an area to be cautious but once we reclaimed it right so that 30 VWMA for me is a big thing when it comes to um, bias and the rest of it when you've got a rising wedge for instance like this and you lose it and then you bearishly retest it, like, as, as a, a pretty big heads up, right? So, definitely check out the uh, 30 volume weighted moving average. That's automated on here for you as well. We've added more um, options available for the calendar levels. You've now got the daily, weekly, and monthly as a single one. But you can also have just the weekly, just the monthly, just the daily, daily and weekly, and weekly and monthly. Right, sometimes you don't always want to see the daily. 
Maybe you're just looking from the higher time frame up. So you can just make it so it shows you where the uh, monthly opened and where the weekly opened uh, and go from there. So handy new little addition there. Um, means you don't have to constantly see that daily in chart if you've zoomed out a wee bit. Next is the stop loss um, recommendation level. So by default when you turn it on, it's set to a noob friendly level. Uh, it tells you literally on the chart, I'm not sure how well you can read that on the recording here. But it says put bullish stop loss below here, so here. So if you were to take a fresh trade here, it's saying put your stop loss all the way down here. Now that's quite a fair way away from price that we are on the daily time frame. If we go down the 4 hour, it's a bit more friendly. Alright. Little load. Here we go. So on the 4 hour, if we're taking an entry, the stop loss is much closer, right? So it's telling you really, ultimately, to put it under the um, demand candle here, in a sense. So you would cross-reference both the ATR uh, multiplier here and the demand block and have it under here. So if I was taking a nice swing trade to the upside here, I'd go long, my stop loss down here, uh, and then allow this to play out, right? You can also have control over that um, ATR multiplier here. So by default it's set to 2, which is noob friendly. And most professionals use 1, right? So 1 brings it much tighter. You'll see it here, you'll jump up in a second. One moment. Cool, so you see how it's come up a bit tighter now? Right, so 1 ATR is usually where you'd, um, most professional traders would use. Uh, and then you could possibly even um, go a bit higher and go under that wick if you wanted to, right? Which then gives you a, um, a larger entry position if you're using the position size calculator, which it should be, right? You've also got the um, option to turn off the, the text here, so it's not noob friendly, but just uh, always available to you. So you just click Advanced Trader. And you've also got the option of how far back that, that little line goes. So you can have it by, say, 10 or 5 or all time if you wanted to. Um, it'll end up looking like this. It should update in a second. Um, cool. So it'll just have these lines here constantly. And then every time a new candle prints, it'll remove one of these, right? Now, it's not saying keep your stop loss below here. What it is is relevant to the current candle. So that level here is relevant to the current candle. It doesn't work like the Ichimoku baseline that I've talked about before. Um, this is in itself for a fresh trade, and that's where your stop loss will go for that fresh trade. So if we're going long right now, our stop loss will be down here somewhere, right? Our entry here, and then we'll allow this to play out for a four hour swing trade to the upside. And that may take weeks to get there, right? We're not looking for instant gratification when we take these kind of trades. Uh, looks like we're pushing up a wee bit at the moment, which is cool. Um, all right. So we'll just turn that off. This is very handy if you guys have a really hard time working out where to put your stop losses. You can do a little bit of like homework on ATR and how it works so you can understand the logic. Ultimately it's based on like price volatility uh, and it tells you where to put your stop loss based on that price volatility. Usually it's an oscillator that actually looks like this which is referred to as average true range, right? This is an indicator on TradingView. However, it usually looks like this, an oscillator, right? We've done the um, the, the homework, uh, the coding and the rest of it, and turned it into this. So it tells you where to put the price, uh, your stop loss, based on the multiplier of this, right? So, definitely makes your life a bit easier. It's called Average True Range if you want to look into it and uh, understand the logic behind it. Um, cool, move on. Next up, we've got the uh, trend signals. Okay, so we've got both the continuation candles and the trend strategy signals. We'll go into both of them individually though. We'll get rid of the drawing tools. Cool, we'll zoom out a wee bit. So this one here, what it does is, um, based on a mathematical equation, will change color based on the direction of the trend. So this is now heating up, but it's saying it's been out for quite a while now. So when they turn orange, it says you should stay in your trade. When it turns teal and then locks in teal, it's saying you should probably consider hedging or taking profit or closing your trade or however your whatever your trading plan said to it's just giving you a suggestion that this run is getting pretty exhausted based on maths. Okay, but you can see here it's not always accurate in the sense that the run was over and carried on up. More often than not, though, like if we're in a short here, more often than not, it gets you pretty bloody close, right? Up here, it gets you pretty bloody close. So you've got to appreciate it for what it is. Um, for me, the way I look at these continuation candles is more of a, hey dude, um, the, the, the run's getting pretty exhausted. 
it might not be a bad idea to run a trailing stop loss from this point onwards, or it might not be an like a bad idea to average out from this point onwards. It doesn't necessarily mean to take profit and get out, because as we can see here, sometimes it just carries on after that candle, right? Or sometimes we get lucky and we get a much deeper buy, or we're wrong completely and it just carries on. So be logical about it, but more often than, the, um, than not, the data is actually there um, saying that these are more often than not better um, listened to than not, which is why we've got them in the indicator. We've got the trend um, strategy signal. This one here will give you buys constantly in an uptrend and sells constantly in a downtrend. Um, it doesn't need like the buy and sell signals. We go back to that really quickly. The buy and sell signals, one has to happen before the other can happen. So there's a sell signal and then you'll see a buy signal and then a sell and then another buy. They work like this. It's an oscillator that's saying buy and sell, buy and sell ultimately, right? Whereas the trend strategy signal has nothing to do with an oscillator and it's actually to do with um, a bunch of different aspects brought together um, which then give you some pretty nice signals, right? So when your trend is up, it's going to give you fresh signals, one after another after another, right? So if you were late to a trade, if you get another one, then you can jump on, or maybe you were able to long the breakout of this, right? Which is like an SR flip, because we're not just randomly taking the buy and sell signals, that's not how trading works. But say we took the SR flip of this huge um, pattern here, we got a buy signal here, we went, okay, cool, pretty confident with that, the bull market started, we're good to go. And then we get another one over here. Maybe you want to add to it, or maybe you want to uh, increase the leverage a little bit, or however you want to do with your risk appetite. Whatever your trading rules say. So you can just keep adding to your position up here, and then maybe when you finally first um, see the the first one in the opposite direction, and be like, "Well, fuck! I'm going to tighten my stop losses. I'm going to average out here. I'm taking profit here." Because um, we can see if you were to long the whole way up in the uptrend. And then maybe take profit here and then short all the way down in the downtrend and then maybe take profit here and then long all the way up in the uptrend you're actually fucking dominating the market you're outperforming the market tenfold just by listening to these little guys right just make sure you're aware of what the trend is doing as you can see here this one here would have got you wrecked nice profit i won't really call that profit or loss that's probably break even profit profit lots of profit right but then there was no more sell signals after that so you would have either been stopped out uh, in profit from these ones uh, or you would have been stopped out at a loss if you're taking this one or break even or small profit because there was still a decent little drop from here to there, right? So you start getting buy signals, you're back in the market. You literally outperform the market if you play this with trend. If you're going sideways like this, just crabbing, then you're not going to have a very good time by the looks of it. Crabbing, not... Not, it's not too bad, a little bit of profit, a little bit of profit, but ultimately like it's, you're scraping the barrel. Uh, make sure you're in a bit of a trend, there's higher, like obvious higher highs and higher lows, which is why it's got the name Trend Strategy Signal and not just signal like the top one up here, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, one moment, I just want to have a quick look at something. Bitcoin just tang a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of an SFP coming in there. So that's an SFP right there. All right, hasn't locked in yet on this candle. This is a 30-minute candle, the 15. It's about to lock in in three minutes, the five-minute. Definitely already locked in. So market ha isn't ready to go to 51K yet, which is fine. Um, that's what an SFP looks like. And that's what we're going to do with the uh, indicator on the next release. It'll actually be able to pick this up and then either give you a signal um, saying, hey, dude, quick check the chart. Or it's going to say, um, if you've set it up, it's going to tell your automated bot to take that trade for you. And you could have got short in this. Alright. So back to the guide. Get rid of this. Uh, what have I done here? Where is the indicator gone? I'm on the wrong chart. What have I done? Here we go. Cool. So back to the guide. The trend based signals. Make sure you're confirmation, confirm, confirming the trend. Higher highs, higher lows, or lower lows, lower uh, highs, right? Next is the divergence. So say, for instance, you, you're an RSI trader and you love trading divergence. Um, this will show it on the chart for you, okay? So if you want to always see the RSI divergence, but you don't want to look at the oscillator, or you don't really give a f about the oscillator, this will allow you to have it on the chart without having to look at the oscillator. Uh, once it loads. Where are we going here? 
I need to increase that look back period here. So there's a look back period. Uh, this means that it only goes so many candles back. It's looking for that divergence. Um, what it does is saves your loading time. It also saves the trading of your servers and saves um, profit 2.0 from crashing. So the higher this is, the more data it has to load. Therefore, it can crash. Uh, I'm just going to increase that value and see if we can get some divergence back here. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of divergence down here. Unless I've done something wrong. One moment, let me see if I'm doing something wrong here. Oh, I got it here. So, this is the divergence also of the oscillators. Down here, you have to actually tick the um, bull and bear divs, right? So, I'll go throw those on. Now, we'll let it load, and now they'll pop up. Sorry, I was a bit of a special moment there. Here we go. Right. So, the four-hour divergences, they just show on your chart like this. So, you don't have to worry about having all that real stuff real estate taken up by the oscillator if you don't care about the actual oscillator itself but you just want to know about the divergence uh, and then that works for all the different oscillators that we've got uh, available on it right we've got our custom one um, which will pop up give it a moment all right so these ones are pink by nature so you're if you were taking the bullish setups, you actually did a really good um, strike rate there, really good profit of the custom one there. And then you've got the MFI, MACD, OBV. You can have them all on at once as well if you really want to. Um, you get a bit of a rave party when you do that. Um, but when you see all the different um, oscillators all lined up with the divergence, like this, right, or like this, you, sometimes you get these nice rallies off it, right? Because the whole market is seeing the same perspective. All the different kinds of traders are like, but my oscillator is showing divergence. Uh, and then the other guys are also like, well, so are our oscillators, you know? So self-fulfilling prophecy kicks in and you make money. Um, what we did because of that is we actually created um, a divergence to look nice and friendly on the chart, which we call it the Golden Pepe. Right, and then you get to choose which one of the oscillators you want to show. Me, by default, I prefer this one. Um... The MFI, the oscillator, and the RSI, but usually the higher um, up you go in these, the more accurate the signal is, or more accurate the um, uh, reaction is. But if you look at this just on the free, right, you've got long in here, you made money. If you've got long in here, you made money. If you've got long in here, you made money. If you've got short here, you would have made some money on your hedge. Um, if we're in a bull market, that's the way how I'd look at it. But, like, it's pretty fucking good, to be honest. So, you get these little, like, this constant money to be made there hedging or um, even shorting on a lower time frame while you're in an uptrend. I don't recommend doing that unless you're, you know what you're doing. Uh, if you're in an uptrend like this on the one hour or the four hour or whatever, you should just be trading in the uptrend. Uh, these small dips like this, they, they usually trade on the intraday time frames like the five minute or the 15 minute. Um, but the if you get a four hour golden peep, pepe on the four hour, it might not be a bad idea to go down to the one hour and maybe try and trade that swing low on the one hour, right, before the pump. You need to be aware, though, while you're in an uptrend, you should expect continuation in the uptrend. Just because a golden pepe appears, you shouldn't be like, well, this runs over, you know. Not how it works. That's not how divergence works. So we'll move on from that. We've got Mooney. Mooney is a custom indicator I made many years ago. Um, it's bloody good at picking rallies before they happen, usually. Uh, it actually combines that 30 volume weighted moving average with a couple of moving averages and then spits out this. Uh, and usually when it goes green and your trend is up, it gives you a bit of an entry. Uh, and usually when this goes green like that, it's saying buy any pullbacks, right? Or any pullbacks into the moving average itself until it changes color back to yellow, which is a... It's not saying sell, it's not saying anything. It's just saying caution, right? When it goes red, that means the volume has tapered off and to be cautious or take profit or whatever... Some people use this to short the market. I personally didn't intend this purpose for that, but it's pretty good at it as well. Um, and when it goes green again, you buy the pullback. Get a bit of a rally. It's pretty um, straightforward. We go out to maybe like the daily, you get some pretty good um, clean rallies out of it, right? When it goes green, you buy in the pullback. Goes green. Green. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. Great for the five minute time frame. No, not five minute. Um, Great for the um, like swing trading. So swing traders should love this on the four hour. Its intended purpose originally was for altcoins paired against Bitcoin. 
So that's where it dominates. That's where I built it around. All right. So the data was always backed around that. What is, we come straight back up. This market knows no chill at the moment. Looks like it wants that 51k yeah? Curious, curious. So we've got next up is the smooth heat map um, moving averages. These are just like the default moving averages. However, they change color based on their strength. So when they start to f pull back like this and they start to go back to a darker color, as so did you know, if you weren't paying attention, right, you want to start getting concerned when they start getting um, to their redder colors. So the top one is the 20 moving average. We lost it, sure, but it started to turn red. So it's losing its momentum tenfold, right? And then we lose it again, it's all over. They're all starting to like peel back up now. And they'll start to go green again. So when they're all green like this, that means we're at full strength in the market. And when they're all red, like back here, that means we're at the weakest point of the market. So if you're having a hard time reading the market, just throw these on the daily, zoom out and be like, yeah, right, we're all green or we're all red or we're neutral. So if you were trying to trade through, say, here, and you had some green and some red, you'd be like, well, that's probably why it's having a, we're having a hard time because the market is undecided. We're not at full strength, nor are we at full weakness, right? You could literally just trade big off these. And, all right, you can go short here, big position, enjoy the ride down. Go long here, big position, ride the ride up. I'm not saying go do that, but that's the power of indicators if you like, you backtest it, you work a strategy around them. And that's why these ones are so powerful in the most simplest of manner. Next up is moving averages. Um, these are just based on the ones you put down here. These are my favorite four by default, and these are my color coding of those by default. Um, you can change these values if you want. If you only want one or two of these, you can just change the value to the same one as the a previous one. Uh, or you can just write zero, I believe. That gets rid of all of them. One, we'll make just one. Yeah, okay, so you, I mean you have to go to, you have to get the same value as a different one or go into the visibility, sorry, style, and actually just turn them off in here. Right, you have to turn each of the individually off. Which is probably the, probably the most logical way of doing it, to be honest. Um, okay, where are we up to? Well, wow, there's so much in this indicator. EMA is exactly the same thing, but EMAs um, looking good. Ribbon, what this does is actually f is for both EMAs and EMAs, it actually colors in between the two. Right, so it looks pretty crazy here, but if you were to turn off um, the, say, the 100, which is a yellow, um, and you were just rocking the, the ribbons, they usually work pretty well as like a, a buy zone or like, like a sell zone when you come into it. Like here's a buy zone here, right, here's a buy zone here, failed, right, then became a sell zone as we came back into it on the rising wedge here. So you can use them in a, uh, in a manner, but when they're all on the chart like this, it looks pretty crazy. But that's why they're called the ribbon, um, because they are pretty crazy looking. To use those to your advantage if you like, if you're a swing trader, they're great for you. And because you can change these values around, um, that works right. We'll turn all those off. Next is the golden, uh, the daily golden death cross. So these are the moving averages, the 50 um, moving average and the 200 moving average. When they cross, it's usually a significant point on a chart on the daily time frame. Uh, in this case, there was a diff cross like here somewhere. The next one happened like down here somewhere, so somewhat relevant, somewhat not really. Golden cross here wrecked everyone. Golden cross here was relevant. Diff cross here made a little bit. So you can see that the diff cross and the golden cross a bit of a meme. Ultimately, all they are is hey guys, like the 50 MA is now above or below the 200 MA. That's essentially all they are. What is Bitcoin doing? Got rejected again. Curious. All right. Anyway, back to the guide. Next up, we've got um, sh the Maya multiple. All right. So we'll throw that on the chart. Cool. Here we go. And it's telling you the um, the the Maya multiple based on where current price is. Right now, the Maya multiple is a multiplication. Um, give me a second. I've got this written down so I don't stuff it up. It's the price of Bitcoin divided by the 200-day moving average. So and then we've got the multiplier of the um, the 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 Maya, right? 
So when the when the multiple gets to a certain point, um, they can end up triggering uh, a bit of a heads up, like the market's getting too overbought, too oversold, and the rest of it. It's worth doing some back testing using the replay tool of this and seeing how they go, or just um, looking up online um, for say Google or something. Uh, how the Maya multiple can help you trade. Um, it was one of the good top signals that um, we had up here uh, when it sped in. So maybe take the time to look look into it. It's not for everyone. It's a bit more advanced. Um, worth checking out though as a top signal or a bottom signal because uh, it's it's based on Bitcoin's price, right? It's relative to price itself. All right, next, moving on. Tool tips. This is just literally tool tips. So if you want tooltips on, that's, that, that's as straightforward as it gets. It'll help you understand um, the indicator and the rest of it. There are some inbuilt strategies in this, which are already currently working. Okay, so this one here, for instance, is the TK crosses. What it does is puts an arrow on the chart um, based on Ichimoku's um, crossing points. So if we go and add the indicator Ichimoku through here, when these two lines, the squiggly lines, which is the conversion line and the baseline cross, like this one here just crossed, it's giving you a signal here saying long, right? You're above the green cloud. It doesn't factor that in for the cross. It's just letting you know about the crosses. Uh, and then when it's crossed bearish, it says down. It's as simple as that. Down, up, down, up, right? Ichimoku does not excel in a sideways market. It does excel in a down market, right? So there's a bearish cross that came through here, locked in. It's saying from that point on which you should be bearish, essentially, if you weren't already bearish from up here. Um, but if you're trading it, traditional Ichimoku rules, that um, was a no trade zone because you were still in the green cloud. Not until here would you actually be able to go short. Um, which is why people should backtest and create their own strategies and, and improve it. Um, one of the guys uh, you guys might know, Kobe, uh, he, he is a guru on Ichimoku. He's got his own... Um, uh, indicators and stuff around it based off his own approach and the rest of it pretty good uh, definitely worth checking out uh, and that's to improve this uh, Ichimoku signals based on his own approach kind of like our trend trading strategy that we've got in this that actually includes some um, work from Ichimoku but that's all the TK crosses it's just those two lines on Ichimoku crossing next up is the cradle strategy this is a really well-known um, forex trading strategy um, been around for, for a long time a lot of people um, package and resell this as a uh, advanced trading strategy, but it's very simple, right? You come back into the uh, what we call the cradle. It's like the ribbon, all right? The ribbon, the ribbon. You lose it. It goes red when the 10 now falls below the 20, right? Very straightforward. Um, if you were to have a, for instance, a green here on the daily, and we're looking to so you missed this, but you wanted to get in. You can wait for a pull back into it here. And then when it pulls back into it, uh, we can use this replay tool to say um, here. And then go to that down one time frame and just check it out, right? So we want to work out when we... Oh, I'll go back to the daily. Let it load. Cool. So as we want to see this... Pl oh, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll pay attention to this part here. I'm going to delete the rest of this crap. So we want to really pay attention to as it came back into the uh, cradle here, into the EMAs, the 10 and the 20 EMA, that's all that is, uh, and just pay attention to how that played out, right, so we can go to say the 12 hour here, let it load, so both the 12 hour um, was reversing or continuing, the daily was also continuing, so we had, essentially we had double the strength, um, double the greater, uh, the, the, the probability that it would be an upside trade so both the lower time frame the current time frame you can even go one time frame above as well um, when they all start to paint the same picture you can take that EMA trading strategy signal all right what else have we got 50 percent pin bar strategy this is coming soon it's not ready yet if you guys have been watching my streams or being a part of market mastery at all um, or whatever you know that I've got a particular trading strategy um, that I use and that is when the pin bar, which looks like this as a candle, right, forms, usually at the bottom of a trend. Um, usually you have some kind of rally that comes off that, and then you come back down, and the candle body will close down here, and then a new one will open here, and then pump back up. And it's usually roughly about 50% of the wick of this, 
right? So we're automating that into the um, next update that's not out yet. That should say coming soon. Um, which will be work that plus the SFP are going to work really well in tandem. Okay, <clears throat> this is a completely new addition here. Um, this is the bull trend volume signal. So we jump out and go back to this here. We we'll jump out to that, say the the daily or the four hour or something. <clears throat> this is purely based on um, the candles itself and volume. It has nothing to do with price itself, right? So when it's green, it's saying you should be bullish. Okay. We've back tested the hell out of this um, with bots. Got a pretty good uh, return ratio on it. Uh, Hayes has said we had to have that done in that uh, in that manner before he'd release it. He doesn't want anything that gives a half hour signals. This is a new edition of his. He made this. This is his baby, um, and it's it's pretty good, right? The risk to reward, sorry, not the risk to reward. The 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 return ratio is huge when it goes green. You're getting some nice entries for right here. This here not so much. And this one here, not so much. But if you're risking, say, 1% of your account or 2% of your account when you take these, the, the odd little ones, um, so not that one here, maybe. Oh, that, that was relevant. Sorry, up here, this one. So maybe you lose 1% or 2% of your account, but when you took the rest of them, right, you're still up stupid amount. So to lose 1 or 2 trades every 4 or 5 trades is not a bad thing when you're managing risk, right? That's why back testing and forward testing and risk management are so important because the upside clearly outweigh those little minor downsides that were playing out there. And maybe if you're using ATR1, you would have been safe in this anyway, right? Uh, for right here. Probably not that one, but ATR1, you could have been safe for right here. I'm not trying to cope or make excuses. It definitely has its pros and cons. Um, I'd say in the trending market, it's probably definitely much stronger. Is it called a trend signal here, Hazer? Yes, it is. Cool. Bull, there you go. Fuck. It's called the bull trend signal. So if your trend is up or forming up and it goes green, maybe use that as a confirmational bias with the rest of your trading strategy. Like, holy crap, you know, like this indicator doesn't care about price itself. Um, and it's suggesting upside. So if you say, hey, if you had Mooney green, we went to Mooney, right? And we had this green and we had like, um, the buy and sell signals, and we also had the, uh, where are we, the trend strategy was that here, this one. Right, so it gets a bit busy on the chart, but just for demonstrational purposes. If we have them all saying to buy right here, we've got green, right, background. We've got both Mooney and the trend strat um, strategy signal and the buy signal all going green here. So there's four different confluential factors said Get the fuck in the market here, right? That literally gave you pretty much one of the best buys of um, 2020 in the safe manner, in the risk to reward manner, right? We're finally up here. We're finally making higher highs. We're finally above um, key resistance, above the apex of the triangle, right? This is actually where I told my family and friends to buy it for up through this pump through here because that's where it was most logical sense in the risk to reward. Not the um and ah and of the watching the charts every day throughout this period, right? That was a safe entry. So when you see those heavy confluence line up, um, definitely want to pay attention. And uh, Hazer, I think what we could do if you're watching this, I'll probably send you a message after this. Let's turn that into a signal as well, like a god signal, like a, a royal peep pepe signal. When all four line up, we smash the buy button no matter what. Alright, sweet. Uh, moving on. Uh, I'll turn all these off. You see the power of confluence is what I tried to show with those four things, okay? Next is the pie cycle top. Um, I've shown you guys this before. This is an indicator um, that's pretty bloody good at picking Bitcoin's tops. Uh, so far, it's pretty much perfect accuracy. All right, one, two, three, four. Four out of four tops, let's pick them. So next time we hit this, guys, <laughs> risk off or... Tighten those stops or just be ready, right? Because look how close it gets to that bloody top. Scary. So that's on there for you guys as well. Um, that's based off uh, moving averages uh, and the pi cycle or pi, the the formula. Definitely worth um, back testing that. Um, a couple of the guys have pointed out that it works on altcoins as well. Um, 
It's made for the daily time frame that I'm aware of. I haven't actually mucked around with it too much other than Bitcoin on the daily. Uh, but some people pointed out that I was working on altcoins as well. So back test, back test, back test. Find out, all right? There's so much to this stuff that we haven't quite worked out completely yet. It's still a baby being like um, developed, all right? Next is the alerts. So if you want an alert um, based on the time frame you're on, so we're on the daily at the moment, you come through here and tick what you want it to be alerted about. So if you want to get that bullish trend strategy, the one we just pointed out, the new one that Hayes has created, um, or the bearish version of it, or when uh, a bull trend starts. Sorry, these are my um, trend strategies. These are the the other ones, the first ones we pointed out. This is Hayes' one here. All right. This is telling you when it stops. So when the volume has chilled out, a bit like when Mooney goes yellow or um, red, same kind of um, approach. It's saying, hey, look, here's an alert. The volume is tapering off. Start paying attention. Next up, we've got the bullish pin bars or bearish pin bars. If you want to be told every time there is one, then you golden pepes, right? And then based on the level you've set. So if you've got level three set when you do this, it'll go on that one. The Mooney buy signal, which we had before, if you, if you never want to miss a Mooney buy again, I'd highly recommend having that on the four hour and the one day of any chart you like watching. The Mooney has made me so much money over the years, and it's such a simple concept. Uh, Ichimoku TK crosses, if you never want to miss a TK cross again, which is that conversion line and baseline. Um, continuation candles, when the orange starts, it'll tell you to stay in the trade, essentially, or tell you to just like this. Keep that, stop trailing. Um, there's some probably more to milk out of this market. And then when it finishes, you can have an alert for that as well. Um, so it's like, hey, look, the math says that this run might be um, overcooked. Um, maybe tighten those stops and maybe just, just whatever your trading strategy said to do. It's just giving you a heads up to do whatever it said to do. All right. And then the pie alert. If you want to never miss a BTC top again, apparently, throw that on and set that alert. You can then change your divergence colors, so those little icons that we had on the chart before under the price on the divergences, you can change the color that they are displayed in um, throughout here. Right, pretty straightforward. And then down here, we've also got like the the um, the buy signals, the sell signals, uh, what levels the the calendar levels come in at, like gray, black, however you want. You can change all the colors through right here. Uh, and then down here is a new addition yet again. Uh, by default, I've put a little message in here. Um, I'll just clean this up, drawings. And it pretty much just says how I approach the market, right? I always start with technical analysis. And then I work out which trading strategy I'm going to apply to the market. I then execute, and then I journal, right? If you rinse repeat that always and over and over like a robot, you're probably going to make it. Um, you can change that message yourself down here. You can be like, bear's not going to make it before you screenshot your chart and send it to a mate that's a bear, you know, if you want to piss them off. You can change the size of the text um, that appears here. You can change the color of the text, straightforward, and then where you want the text, below, above, or however, right? It's a really good way to set yourself reminders if you want, like, um, no taking um, subpar entries you know you can have something like that on the chart just a constant reminder like i only look for the best setups or however you want to do it the your imagination uh, is the limit on this um if you've got children and you've got to pick them up from school and you don't want to be classified as that bad parent who keeps forgetting about their kids could be a good idea be like hey um don't forget to pick up the kids right and then when that pops up oh here we go cool Right, so while you're trading and being a degenerate, whatever it is that you do, uh, at least you've got a constant reminder you've got children um, and you don't get stuck in your own little echo chamber for too long. Um, once you've got all those alert options ticked for the alert section, to actually go ahead and create that as an alert, you've actually got to go up here, go alert, click the plus, click that. Up here to the condition and choose profit 2.0. Don't touch any of this part. Don't You don't need to pick any of this. So don't touch that. This alert, any this, this function here, what that is doing is actually reacting to whatever you've ticked in here, okay? So when you go plus alert here, just choose how you want to be alerted about it. If you want to have your own custom message, go, go by all means. Um, I'd recommend just leaving it all blank as, as pretty much presets are like this for you. Um, you can go ahead and change it, but I'd recommend not, because then it will tell you why it's alerted. It'll tell you what's going on, okay? Um, that pretty much wraps up Profit 2.0. Uh, 
Um, a few new additions, a few new updates. Um, pretty excited with that. We'll move on to the Prophecy Guide next uh, and go from there. Thank you guys.